Hey there, Midas Letter subscribers. Today I've got a special guest. Scott Burton joins me now. He's the CEO of Fans Unite Entertainment Inc. Trades on the CSE under the symbol F-A-N-S and trades in the United States under the symbol F-U-N-F-F. -F. Scott, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Scott, so tell me, uh, tell me about the business of Fans Unite first, please. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in the online gambling space, so we're kind of a global technology company focused on that area. Um, we operate a few parts of the business. So we have um, our B2B, which is really built off of our technology backbone. So, so we've been working on gambling technology going back to 2013. So we've operated our own sites direct to consumer and then B2B. So um, the technology is really the core of the business. Then on top of that, we have licensing deals where we license our software to other operators. Uh, but we also do operate some of our own direct to consumer. So we have a couple of brands uh, that we operate in the betting space. And then we also have a casino games division. So we're producing our own games built off of a certified random number generator. Um, we're really a combination of a couple of businesses. So Fans Unite got public last year in May. Uh, the company I started was called Ascot Entertainment. We merged in with Fans Unite in August. So Fans Unite was focused a bit more on the traditional sports world and, and Ascot, we were focused on the esports world. So now we've combined traditional sports, esports and casino. Wow, fantastic. And uh, as, as has been happening throughout the last decade, uh, online gambling is certainly starting to open up. How uh, you've, you've reported quite a bit of revenue. Tell me about the financial condition of the company as it stands presently, please. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really solid right now. So we, um, we merged, as I said, the two companies in August last year. We did a brokered financing of just over $5 million. Uh, December, we announced another financing. Uh, we were, uh, sorry, um, yes, December, we announced another financing. We were going to do another $5 million. Um, overnight, we upsized that to $10 million. At the end of the day, we closed at eleven. dollars So we, we ended up bringing in about $13.4 million additional capital in January. Uh, and then the revenue is ramping. So uh, one of our sites we mentioned in Q1 was um, McBookie. Uh, Fans United acquired that last year, been around eight or nine years. We just had a record quarter. So um, almost a million dollars in gaming revenue for McBookie in Q1. So in terms of our, our current situation, we have about $15 million in the bank, uh, revenue ramping on all fronts. So our B2B business, our direct to consumer, um, got another eight or 9 million in unexercised warrants, uh, and we have zero debt. So um, we're in a very good spot right now. In terms of the competition for the markets that you're in, what is the landscape look like? How much of a player are you relative to the 900 pound gorilla and who is the 900 pound gorilla in the space? Yeah, so there's there's a couple in a, if you break it down by sort of our uh, areas of business. So, so in the B2B side, which is being the technology provider to online casinos and sports books, you know, you look at the gorilla as like an SB tech or a Canby. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys that are being acquired now. So when you look at the direct to consumer gorillas like a DraftKings or an MGN or a Penn National, uh, you know, DraftKings went out and acquired SB Tech. So they acquired one of the gorillas in the technology provision space. Um, GAN is another uh, B2B business that acquired some technology in CoolBet. So they acquired some sports betting technology. Bally's has been on a very active uh, run of acquiring things. So they acquired another technology platform called Betwork. So on the B2B side, um, we're still small, but uh, the bigger operators are either consolidating or being acquired. So there's a lot of interest in what we're doing with people who are losing their technology providers or realizing they need to actually own the tech one day. Uh, then on the direct to consumer side, I mean, there's huge groups like the Flutter Group, which is made up of Paddy Power Betfair, there's William Hill, and then in the US, people would know names like DraftKings and Penn. So we don't look to compete with them on a direct-to-consumer side. Um, what we do, because we own the technology and we own the licenses, we can launch uh, brands very quickly and very cost-effectively. So we look at niche markets where we think we can you know, carve out a space for ourselves, and McBookie's a very good example of that. 
So if you talk to somebody about the UK betting market, it's huge, it's mature, uh, there's big players there and it doesn't make sense to go into it unless you can find a niche like us, which is the Scottish market. So we offer the best odds on Scottish football slash soccer. Um, we offer more levels of Scottish soccer betting than any other one. We have a great horse racing product and all the marketing is tailored to Scotland. So we're a big player in Scotland, whereas we're a small player in the UK overall. Uh, we're doing the same thing in Brazil with an esports brand. So again, we own the tech, we have the licenses. Uh, Brazil is a big market um, and it's got a huge esports following. So we're launching a Brazil specific brand for there. So we don't want to go up against the big direct to consumer guys. We're not planning to launch any direct to consumer brands in the US, for example, but we do plan to be and we are a technology solution for US operators. Then so how how difficult is it for new startups to sort of muscle into this market? Is it like uh, sort of kind of t tough and prevented by the fact that you need a technology platform of your own? Yeah, yeah, it's getting tough that way. Just on the tech side, I mean, you can still go and white label, which, you know, we provide that service to people. So people who maybe have a solid brand and, and you know, a lot of eyeballs don't want to go through the process of getting their own licenses, setting up servers, um, we can provide them that with a white label. But yeah, to go and build your own tech, I mean, we've been building our platform over the last six, seven years. Uh, we've been getting licenses around the world. So that's a huge barrier to entry at a startup. And then if, um, if you're a startup wanting to go direct to consumer, uh, the marketing dollars required to go up against some of those big gorillas is pretty massive. So um, it's still a tough space for startups. And the regulatory barriers are just getting harder. They're not getting any easier. So you're seeing more and more regulation in markets that may have been easier to access before. So just that regulatory side makes it a tough one for startups these days. Uh, what's the going to be the big revenue driver in 2021? So this year we're still expecting it's going to be our existing um, B2C sites. So McBookie and then on business development, we're getting more and more uh, uh, B2B contracts. Those will take some time to develop the, the big revenue streams. But um, so again, this year, uh, heavy direct to consumer moving towards more B2B next year. Sure. And are there markets where you've got your eye on that are maybe not far enough along the, uh, the regulatory side that you expect to turn into a positive betting environment anytime soon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one we're 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 sort of located in Canada is is one we're watching very closely, uh, as are others. Um, you know, we think we're uniquely positioned for Canada because we are uh, one of the only or or the only you know Canadian made and built technology solution for online gambling that's shown they can operate in the UK, Malta, you know, around the world. So. Canada, uh, there was an announcement yesterday, I don't know if people saw that, but um, there's a, a bill being passed in Canada around single event betting, which is going to open that up. Uh, the provinces will be you know, allowed to take single event sports bets, which is a big step for Canada. But the bigger one for us is um, provinces making indications that they're going to open up to outside operators. Uh, Ontario is the first one to do that. We're looking for Ontario to probably have that in place by the end of the year. Uh, and we know other provinces are, are following that closely and we expect more to come next year. So uh, Canada is a very exciting one for us. We think we, again, we're well positioned not only being based here, um, but the fact that we've never ever taken bets in Canada or allowed any of our partners to take bets in Canada. So uh, we wouldn't be considered a bad actor, you know, if and when things change. And we know they're looking at um, jurisdictions like Malta and the UK uh, for guidance, and we're already licensed in Malta, and we're about to get licensed in the UK. Wow, fantastic. All right, Scott, that's a great update on the company. We're going to leave it there for now. We're going to watch with interest okay. and come back to you soon. Thanks for your time today. All right, thanks a lot.